Hello everybody, Reggie Time here again with James. We've got some more hands from James's database. Looks like we're starting with 10 and L. Is it all going to be 10 and L, James? I or have we got other stuff? 5 and L in there. Okie dokie. We're going to do as many as we can over 45 minutes and um, go from there. Don't forget, if you're watching the videos, um, please hit the like button. Any comments or questions for me or James, just fire them in below and I'm sure we'll both respond to them. So, James, away we go, sir. So, <clears throat> um, so we get an open from cut off. I guess um, we don't know anything about him given there's no stats. No, he, no if it's completely blank, it's just literally okay. the first time I've played against him. Would you ever consider three betting this versus somebody who isn't starting 100 blinds deep? Yes. <clears throat> um, if it's against a week or sort of regular, um, usually for a bit less than that, um, I'd probably try and free bet it. If we're really deep as well, I might try and free bet it as a bluff because I don't really want to play a super deep this sort of hand. Yeah, I think I'd do it mostly just to like, prevent from getting squeezed. And yeah. well, I mean, we don't know we're ahead of his range because it's an unknown. But given he's not fully stacked, we're going to make some basic assumptions that he's not like a super skilled regular. So he's likely to be making all kinds of mistakes. Not saying he's going to be. We don't know. He might be loose. He might be like one of these guys who's just really weak, tight, and overfolds. Who knows? But we expect him to make enough mistakes where I think three betting's probably better than flatting. Just because if he gets squeezed, it's a rough spot. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not a rough spot when you flop top two, of course, but it's like what you're doing versus various squeeze sizes you have different options. <clears throat> but I think I'd rather just three bet here, knock the blinds out. And either he falls pre flop, which is just fine by yes. us, or he calls, we take a flopping position, or he four bets, and we could just make a pretty easy fold. So I would have preferred to see the three bet versus someone who we think might not be a skilled regular, but never mind. <clears throat> so, we uh, so we go ahead and. He checks and we value bet. Yep. Uh, he goes ahead and calls. Uh, see a queen. Still, I think, pretty good to keep betting here. Yeah, absolutely. He calls and the queen pairs on the river. That's kind of unfortunate. Um, I think I probably... Yeah, I think I just check back here. Um, we... Getting called by worse seems almost impossible, unless he's like really, really bad and just doesn't want to fall the hand like pocket kings or something. Seems hard we're going to get coming. We're obviously chopping or losing to like either losing to ace queen or chopping with all these other aces. Um, <clears throat> if we get raised, we just have to fold. I just don't think it's that good a spot for the bet, unless we bet super, super small and just hope he's got pretty much just pocket kings. I think it's the only thing we can hope to get a small value bet called by, really. Maybe if he's got a hand like King Jack or something, if he bets small, if he might call. But when we're talking about like such a narrow range of hands that can only call a small bet, I think at that point, I just think, well, you know what? It's, <clears throat> we've maybe got as much value as we can get for our hand. And I would just check back here, I think, a lot of the time. Well, that was really, I'd check back. It was just a case of, did I miss out on some value on the river? I memory? don't think, there's just not that much you can get called by. If the queen didn't pair, then yeah, we could. You know, if the, if like the queen was an eight on the river or something, we can get called by all kinds of worse hands. But the, the problem is now all these worst aces chop with us. So like a lot of our value has been destroyed by this queen on the river. And I don't think we're beat very often, but there's a chance that sometimes he has just like, if he's like king queen or something, he's backed into trips. He might go for a check raise, which would make me want to puke. Um, so yeah, it's just a spot where uh, there's tiny value to be had, but I think that's going to be outweighed by just like getting called and losing a decent yeah. amount of the time as well. So I would just check back and whatever, just get on with it. It's just not been the best of runouts. Yeah, we won't get any value from that. Yeah. Um, I hope you took a note that he's opening king eight and then check calling seven ace jack flops because that's really important to know stuff like yeah. that. Magic. <clears throat> This hunt up from the button. Get two callers. Get docked into. This is a bit odd. Don't think we've got any much option here apart from just calling. Yeah, really. calling's easily the best option. Um, he then checks. <clears throat> it's a bit odd as well. Yeah, I wouldn't be betting here. I'd just be like, as soon as we, like, we get this flop and he donks and checks. I just think he get me to show down. But there's, there's things we could still be ahead of. We could be ahead of like gut shots. Um, that he's like dunk the flop with like all the like straight draws he can have. I mean, for example, if he's dunk jack ten, now he's got a pair. Yeah. If he's dunk ten nine, now he's got a pair. But if he's dunking then, there's a good chance he's also dunking stuff like seven five, seven six, all those types of things. Um, we don't need to bet. I think we're plenty enough. Ahead. We haven't really got anything to protect against. 
Um, because if we're behind, well, we're behind. <clears throat> And if he has got a draw, well, most of them I would imagine are going to be good shots. Because if he's, if he's donkey and flush draws, I'm probably going to barrel a turn. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, was a bit odd. I thought he'd stopped at this point. Yeah. I, my guess is he might have like a 10x type hand, like some yeah. kind of gut shot that's donked and now made a pair. He's, he's certainly not going to fold it if we bet, so I would just check and then see a river, play some rivers. Yep, yeah, so I do that, I check back. And then he bets out on the river. See, I think this is a spot where if... If we think our opponent's half decent, because it's like a blocky size bet. Yeah. I kind of like thinking about making a bluff raise here. Yeah. Um, I don't think we can call. I don't yeah. like, I hate calling. I think calling's, it's not ideal. I think it's either fold or raise. Because we block the notes, it's like more of a PLO concept, but <clears throat> I think if we just pop this up to like, I don't know, $3 here, he's going to have a hard time calling, unless he's like got the flush, unless he's, like, ch like checked six, seven the diamonds or whatever, some kind of flush draw on the turn and I've got there. I think it's probably everything that isn't that isn't a flush. Um, he's going to put lots of pressure on his two pairs even. Um, yeah, I would probably either fold or I'd make it something like 320, something like that. If we're going to bluff, I'd make it really big. I wouldn't make it where he can get curious with, a, with like a lot of his value combos. If he's got a hand like 810 here, for example, or if he's got a hand like, I don't know, who knows what? Somehow he's, he's, he's got a king in his hand. So he's like, King Jack. I, I'm, I can't think what many kings he would have. But if he's had some random, like, spewy donk that's now somehow got there with the pair, I want to put, like, maximum pressure on it. So I'd either fold or I would bluff raise. I'd rather bluff raise versus a regular, but um, I still think I like it. Yeah. I'm going to pin me gonna pin me colours to the mast of raise to about 320. I go for the set. I go a bit smaller, but I did go get to the same conclusion. Yeah, really. I think the problem with this sizing is, is he's getting such a good price on his call. If he does somehow have two pairs, which I don't think he's going to fold two pairs too often anyway, yeah. but um, yeah, I just don't think it's big enough. I like the idea. I think we need to commit to it a little bit more though. Yeah. Um, he, just he folds, folds anyway, so yeah. good stuff. So the, that's another one where we could talk about note taking. In that, like, we can think about bluff raising his half pot, like river bets and things. Now, he's like, if it looks like he's because a lot of people put these block bets out and never fold, which is noteworthy. Yeah. The ones that do is also noteworthy because he's took an unusual line. So, when people take unusual lines, I usually try and note it. Maybe it's not that much use to me on its own, but if we get a couple more notes, we can start like maybe understanding what his overall strategy and philosophy is, which we can exploit. <clears throat> and that's just like you know me say you're always going to do that versus block bets but it's just something what you do if you collect several notes you can then hopefully try and figure out what people's like overall poker philosophies are and then you yeah. can look to exploit their overall strategy rather than just individual lines that they take so that's where we want to take notes on things like that but yeah that worked out nicely cool. uh, so we open here seems like good value into too fat. And then he mm -hmm. basically min raises. Um, well, obviously we're not folding. Yeah. I, I think three betting could have some merit. He's kind of repping pocket threes and pocket fives only here. Um, obviously we're ahead of his ace three, ace five, if he's got five three suited ever. Um, we're ahead of his draws that has developed. Um, you've only got four hands on him, which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah. If, it, if it's... I think I'd probably call here versus most players and just bluff catch rivers. But there's some guys I could be convinced that three betting against might work. The problem is we are pretty fucking deep and it's gonna be grim. If we were to like three bet to say four four twenty here, something like that, and he just like fucking shipped it on us, we'd be puking this deep. So yeah. I think my inner net is saying oh if hundred blinds deep, I might just say fuck it and commit to it. And if it's top two versus a the set, then fuck my life. Yeah. Um but this deep I think I prefer to call and then play some rivers. Even though out of position, our options are usually going to be check call or check fold, unless we improve. Um, I still like just calling and checking all rivers, I think. I'm going from there. I was saying, but just was, the fact we're so deep. Yeah. Ten of um, diamonds isn't ideal because, like, obviously the most obvious draw gets there on the river. I don't think he's got yeah. King Jack very often, but um, 
And that, that was just a check, and it's just decide based on his sizing, and, and then he like tells you might have had like any time intels or anything, which is you're not likely to have with some of your forehands. Yeah, so I check, and he basically pots it. And he pots it. See, because on the turn he's he's saying I have a set. Oh, that's where his value range looks like. I have a set. I have two pairs. Yeah. Would two uh, pairs? Bet this big. Yeah, I don't think sets and two pairs would bet this big. So he's quite polarized here to some random turn bluff. That he's just continuing with, or he's turned equity and now he's got a flush. Um, I mean, the diamond's really shitty, but in a way, it kind of. I don't know. I mean, it's text. I think he'd, if he's got a set, he was doing his fucking fair play to him. You know, yeah. it's a really good bet. Um, <sighs> uh, I just, I know, I can't fall top two here. I just have to pay it off. It's just, a, if we're beat, it's just, we're beat. Sometimes you just have to pay it off. And I think this is one of those occasions where we just have to pay it off. I don't like it. I hate paying off in these games. Like, yeah. turn, min, raise, river, pot, size, bet. It reeks, absolutely reeks of strength. But um, I just don't think I can fault this hand. Uh, it's just, I think our hand's just too strong. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that, the diamonds have got there which like removes a lot of his like i don't see what bluffs you can really have here but he might just still have ace five or so fuck knows who knows um it's grim it's a rough spot i don't think we're making much money on it but i think i just call anyway yeah i got i couldn't see what sort of hands he backstores into flushes really because you think he's gonna call with like an, an ace or a medium pocket mm -hmm. pair but then what really gets there and raises for a flush and the only hand i could have here that might raise this turn would be something like six seven of diamonds exclusively or six four of diamonds a very very fucking narrow combo because like i said not many diamonds get to the turn yeah um yeah i think i'd have to just pay this one off i think yeah. i do and he turns up with that oh fuck sake. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that one, that does. I mean, that turn raise him. He's, he's obviously what he's doing there. The note we've got on the turn there is he's clearly min raised that turn to try and get himself a free river. Yeah. So I would definitely note that that he's min raised the turn, like min raised turn in position to get free river with a question mark. Because we don't know if that's been his motive, but that's typically when people do that. Like, shit, I don't want to call another bet. Let's just find out where we're at. Or let's slow him down. Let's stop our opponent in the tracks or whatever. Um,. So I would note that he's like raising min raising turns in position with like turning made hands into like weird bluffs. Because that's totally unexpected that he turns up. I mean, I'm not surprised he's turned up with a set, I'm just surprised he's turned up with that one. So when you put the question mark, that kind of always means Did you ever get was it you were talked to about um the Thin Red Line videos on no, no. taking or oh, somebody no. else. I mentioned it to somebody recently. And I think I mentioned it on Facebook too. If you guys, anyone watching this video, because we've talked about notes a couple of times in this video, if you want to improve your note taking, go to Deuces Cracked, get your seven day free subscription, and download all the thin the thin red line videos from a creator called Grindcore. It's very old now, but it's getting on for ten years old. But it's still it's super interesting videos. And on top of that, um, he has like a really good way of taking notes, a really good method of um <clears throat> taking notes so thin red line by grindcore the the author um guarantee you, you'll come away from that thinking you know what i think some of the poker strategy he uses is still relevant in microstates games but but like the way he makes notes and the way he teaches people to make notes i think it's fucking superb so it's definitely worth a watch for anyone who struggles with the note taking um, that's a seven day free trial is it I think it's pretty sure if you've never registered before you get a seven day free trial and you can just download the content to your computer and never have to pay them um, it's a bit cheap these days but never mind who cares people are off the cheap stuff that's why they're watching <laughs> bad video makers like me on YouTube because they like free <laughs> stuff don't they so there we go let's move on to the next one <clears throat> uh, so I guess look around and the check behind make two bets and we just pot this i think would you lead out and bet? yeah it's yeah. a limped pot you can't guarantee someone's going to bet <clears throat> there's all kinds of value we can get and our hand's dead vulnerable yeah. so yeah we're just a potted there um he lead down i would check raise now then we've missed a chance to yeah we've missed a chance to pot but now we can check raise so i like it i would have yeah. maybe gone a little bit bigger because yeah. we're giving him quite a good price on a call there if he's got a draw 
Or do you make it something like 150-ish? Um, he made it... What, can we click back once to see yep. what... It, so he made it 30. Yeah, I'm just going to hope he's got, like, top pair or better. And they're going to make it quite big. I'd make it... Look, I want to, like, really build the pot as quickly as possible whilst I like my equity, whilst we can get tons of value from worse hands and before any, like, shit cards come off. So I'd make it really quite big. I'd be looking to make it a minimum 150, 160, something like that. And if the turn bricks off, I'm just going to absolutely bomb the turn as well. And by brick, I mean anything, really. Anything that isn't red or straightening. So if it, if it comes off like a random queen of clubs, I'm just fucking blasting the turn. Yeah. <clears throat> he goes... And the nine, some straights get there, but yeah, I'm just going with it. I would have bet much bigger than that. Yeah. <clears throat> Basically, like around pot sort of thing. Yeah. In spots like this, I just want to build a pot as quickly as possible. Um, so I'd have made me raise bigger on the flop, and I would have s fucking smashed this turn to pieces. Um, if, if we made the flop raise to, say, 160, it'd have called. We could even consider sometimes over bet jamming on this turn, like for 2x pot or something. Could, yeah. You'd want to do that with some bluffs sometimes, too. So, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to play this incredibly fast. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess he's going to call now a lot of the time. If he jams, it's not nice, but whatever. I guess we go with it. <clears throat> and that river is absolutely honking. Yeah. So um, I'd check. Yeah, I would check too. And... And I would fold, I think. We, we don't block uh, any hearts or anything like that. I think blockers can be slightly overrated. I think I've kind of overrated them a little bit recently. I've got a bit blocker central. Um, but, I mean, our hand's just lost an absolute ton of value on that river. And he can considerably have lots of 10x in his range. Or even if he just has, like, pocket eights, now he's beating his pocket jacks or whatever. Um, I think he checks back a lot of like one pair of the beats us so this yeah. again this is quite a polarizing bet um but i think people just give up a lot of the time here with draws that have missed i don't think people bluff anywhere near as much as they should in these spots and i think they're going to be pretty value heavy I, I just think bluff catching in these situations seems like a good idea but i don't think i don't think people are bluffing enough to to, to make it worthwhile especially with the nine getting there because like eight sevens got there on the turn as well which isn't a big part of his range but it's just one more thing we don't beat. Um, yeah, I think I would just fold here and feel a little bit sad about it. I, just don't, I don't think people are bluffing. I think leaning towards overfolding rather than calling too much in them situations, if we're going to be exploitable in one way or another, I think folding too much is going to be better than calling too much. Yeah, especially at these stakes. Is what yeah, we absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> we to the next one. There we go. Gets on to us. Can yeah, I get a call at this point? we've got to. Yeah, I was thinking how we're going to get into this pot, and I'm yeah. still, I'm still thinking how's it, how we get into this. <laughs> if this doesn't check through, I'm going to be surprised that yeah. you brought this hand to the table. Yeah. So check through. I'm just keeping checking personally. Yeah. And now I'm folding. Yeah, I just said. Oh, we've gone for a race. Yeah. All right, interesting. Um. I'm not quite sure what we're exactly representing apart from maybe pocket fours, maybe pocket eights, pocket fives. So that's one second. Mid TV to turn itself on. Yeah, this is um, yeah, multi-way pots. I tend to stay in line as as much as possible. He's, albeit I get like we try to attack his weak. Uh, we try to attack like the pot because we don't think anyone can have very much but he's just led into four players yeah um i don't think we're getting many if any falls here um because he can conceivably have but he can't have pocket kings but he can conceivably have all the sets he was going for checkers in the flop with um that was, wouldn't race yeah i think it's i would probably fold sometimes i might call but i think our draws is too weak if we are going to play i think raising is better than calling for sure because at least we give ourselves much more, more ways to win the pot but I think I personally would just have folded. I think calling would have been awful. I think raising is better than folding. So in the old-fashioned ways of doing things, I think fold is better than raise, which is better than calling, better than call. I think. Yeah. And then... He does that. And clicks it back. We're in a world of, world of, world of hurt. Because um, we could be drawing dead here. 
He could yeah. just have the six seven, and we could be completely fucked. Um, <laughs> oh fucking hell! Um, I don't feel any fault, Equator. No, no, I'm, I'm completely. No, yeah. I'm just thinking, can we call them? Just like sometimes be good if we spike the river, but if we like hit the the six, we're a long way from the fucking nuts. Yeah, I'm just gonna fold. I'm just going to regret not playing the hand the way I did. I'm just going to fold. Because if we're drawing like to the nuts both ways, I'd be like, yeah, fair enough. But we haven't got the nuts. We can't improve to the nuts. And we've been bet three bet. For me, that's enough to say, you know what? We've lost enough money in this pot. Let's just get the fuck out. Yeah, I gave up at this point as well. <laughs> it's like, there's that many cards that make a hand that we hate. So. Yeah, it's... Never um, mind. But yeah, we do live and learn. That's how we do learn. We, we, we fuck around and we try different things and we do different things and we find things that sometimes work and we find things that don't work. And I'd say semi bluff raising the shittest straight possible, the shittest straight draw possible in a multi way pot might not be the best way to tackle these games. But, you know, fair play to you, you brought it to us. I'd have been like, if I'd have played that hand, I'd have been like finding ways to scratch it from my database. <laughs> <laughs> or at least scratch it from my memory. But no, yeah. fair play to you. I mean, I think. We have played it not great, but yeah, it's 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 been interesting nevertheless. But you, 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 the, the lesson to be learned there is when people from like the blinds lead into multi-way pots, they they're gonna have, in my opinion, usually gonna have like a pretty fucking strong range. So yeah. going for semi bluffs versus it might not be the best thing to do. Now if we'd have had like a much stronger draw there, if we'd have had like ace three of clubs or something like that. Then I could have got much more on board with it because we're going to we're going to be have draws to the nuts at least. But when we're semi bluff raising with like a pretty fucking weak draw that mm. might be drawing dead. I'm not saying it is, but might be drawing dead. Yeah. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. But never mind. As I say, we live and learn, and it's good that you're out there like doing things out of the box, you know, because that's how we stumble on things that work really well. Yeah, occasionally it costs us some money, but sometimes we're like fucking. I get a lot of falls in this spot, and sometimes you just identify good spots to 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 make moves that you hadn't really previously thought about. So, yeah, yeah, I like the fact you're out there doing these things. This one didn't work out. Never mind. We laugh about it and we move on. Yeah. So, yeah, open with queens and called. Let's check. Looking to check all. Yeah. Checks it back. Um, I just had a check here, which I now don't really like. Yeah, I think we could value that a little bit. Um, I think we can like just half pot it twice here and hope to yeah. get paid back a nine or something. Um, and he checks it back again. So I decided to finally go for some value at the end. And then he res. <laughs> uh, what gets to this river and wants to raise? Jack nine. What? Because uh, I mean, if he if he if he had a beat on the turn, you'd imagine he would have value bet. So it's kind of yeah. what part of his range does? I mean, Jack Nine wants to play this way. Does he have Ace Jack and do this? I mean, I doubt it. Surely Ace Jack just bets the turn on the flop. Yeah. Um, you can have all kinds of like Jack Six Diamonds, Jack Six Hearts, I guess shit like that. Just like weird suited Jack X. Um. Yeah, I just don't think it doesn't look like a bluff to me because, I mean, if you had a bluff, why didn't you just bluff the turn? Why is he waiting for you to bet the river to then try and bluff when you check twice? If he was, if he was inclined to want to bluff, surely he would just like stabbed versus your checks. It doesn't make sense that he would now want to wake up and bluff this river. Now, that's not to say that players don't do this sometimes, yeah. but this isn't a spot where I think where I want to really bet, bet calling rivers with like under pairs. Um, even though it's cheap enough in terms of like, big blinds, we're only just going to put six blinds in, so it's not like a super costly call um i think i would just fall because it just doesn't strike me people can always do random things so if we call here it turns up with some fucking stupid bluff we can pass us in the back but in general i think people are just going to have like somehow rivered some weird hand and just be getting going for value so i think i would i would call you with an ace for sure if i had like somehow i'd like ace deuce or something like that and i'd check twice maybe then because just in case it's like I don't know, fucking no, thin value raising somewhere. I, don't, I know it's a confusing hand to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I just I think it's a fold. Yeah, I fold because I can't work out where it's to be. Plus, it's, anyway, it's only a small sample, but someone who's thirty-six-seven usually is quite passive. Yeah, it doesn't. When they start raising rivers, you kind of 
Yeah, it just makes no sense. I mean, it's a small pot, so you kind of want to call because yeah. you're just curious. And you're like, oh, it's only 65 cents. Um, it but, just felt the top of my range that I get there with, but I was hit paying off. Yeah, I mean, I think if we're folding that, we're, clo we're folding close to everything because the only other hands we might play that way, like our weakest aces, we might maybe check some of them because I think we have to check some aces, but yeah. I think we probably bet our ace on the turn to, uh, yeah, maybe that is the very best hand, so maybe we do have to call there. But, no, I, I don't. I don't hit the fold. I think the mistake there was just not leading the turn for value. I yeah. think. Uh, I go ahead to raise. It's something that's part of my bluff around. We have ace five and ace two suited. Okay, okay. So second. Yeah, cold, cold, and small blind. From like, a, that's a complete unknown, is it? Yeah, complete unknown. Thank you, okay, this hand looks like it's going to go well. Well, it probably go disastrously somehow, yeah. <laughs> but it's nice flop anyway. Yeah, mm. it's a brilliant flop. Uh, so we go ahead and bet. I think I could have bet smaller there. Yeah, because it's quite a dry flop. Yeah. Um, and I'm, not, I'm not worried about protecting against flushes as much in three bet pots. Because yeah. people have a lot less of like the suit connector type hands. So I'm less worried about sets, but yeah, anyway, it's good stuff. We get called in two spots. And the flush does get that, but I think we still get plenty of value. I think so we can. The problem is if we get jammed on here, we're like, how how often are we good? That's the trouble, I think. Yeah. Um, I think it's. I think yeah, we, you're you're right in thinking we're still probably the best and the vast majority of the time, but it's like what, what calls you know? I think if we're gonna if I was gonna va bet for value here, I'd be targeting stuff like ace queen king queen yeah. that type of thing, and I think that's a big bet to be called by. Yeah, that, I would that say that's sad. Hand. Yeah, I think your sizing's off here. I like barrel in the turn a lot, but I think I'd have gone much smaller. I'd have been like one third pot. Yeah. Because now I think we, if we get jammed on, we kind of we can't get away from our hand, and I think there's a good chance we're going to be fucked. Yeah. He just calls. And then checks. So if we're better here, what are we better for value from? If he's literally probably just ace queen. Ace queen, yeah. Um, if he's really bad, he can obviously king queen. And yeah. Uh, queen, basically, it's just queen x, isn't it? I mean, and yeah. if he's got some slow playing aces or kings in his range, which he might, but given the small blind called, I'd imagine he'd just four bet them a fucking ton of the time. Not all, we can never say always, but a lot of the time. Um. I still think at this point, though, we got. I, I still think I just jam for value because I don't think he's going to fold any of those hands. Um, I understand why if you check back, you get why you might have checked back. And I think if we do bet, a lot of times we're going to get called and we're going to get beat. But I think he's going to have enough queen X in his hand that just says, fuck it, the pot's too big, I can't fold. That I think it's okay. So I would just jam here um, and expect it to be showing more. Like I expect to be plus EV anyway. We're gonna make. I think we're gonna make money on the jam. Maybe not much, but I think we're gonna make money on the jam because I think a lot of the time, if he has flushes, he maybe just check raises the turn versus that bet size. And because it's a three bet pot, I'm less worried about flushes. Not ruling them out, of course, but because he's, he's called a flop C bet and he's called a turn bet, so he can obviously have some. But I don't think he should have as many flushes. You wouldn't expect him to have as many like eight sevens, six sevens, that type of thing. So I would just jam here, and if he has turned up with a flush, or he's got queens full, then it's kind of shit to be you for this moment, isn't it? Yeah. I think. Uh, I'll go ahead and chip in, just it's literally, they said, not much really to go for. And he turns up with the flush. That is pretty unfortunate. I mean, I guess he, he, he calls because the small blind's called too, and he's closing the action. So I don't hate his call. Yeah, it's just a cooler, isn't it? I mean... Once that flop comes down, neither is going anywhere, and he just, it was his turn to win, I guess. But yeah, yeah I, think, was, I think jamming the river is the right thing to do, though. Yeah, so it was more the river bet is doing, is there enough fin value to get to justify putting it in? Yeah, because, you know, it's such a small portion of the pot, he's going to be getting such a good price, he's not going to be able to fold Queen X. He might not even be able to fold, like, King, if he's got pocket kings or something, he might not even be able to fold that either. Uh, sorry, not pocket I lost my train of thought there. What was I thinking of? I was going to say pocket jacks, but obviously jacks now beats us. Yeah. But yeah, I think we just have to bet because he's just going to feel committed with a lot of stuff that beats us. So yeah, I think we just bet, get the rest of your value, and this time it's turned up with a flush. Yeah. Cool. Never mind. Yeah, so this one's five and out. Yeah. 
we go ahead and squeeze. Um, I don't like playing at the small blind in particular, so I'm usually free but off all really. Yeah, um, I get on board with that most of the time. I think if we're going to go multi-way, I quite like flopping sets multi-way. Um, I think whether I called or three bet there would depend very much on what I thought the big blind three betting strategy was or squeezing strategy was. The more likely I would be to get squeezed, the more likely I would three bet like you did. Um, uh, I think I probably would have called because the button's called two. I think I would have called and just hoped not to get squeezed. Um, because if we three bet here and we get four bet, we we probably have to fold, and then I don't like that because we a lot of times we're going to be getting four betted by hands that we have tons of equity, tons of equity against. Yeah. So I think I would have called. I think if the button hadn't called, I would have three bet for sure. Um, but with yeah, the button called into chance to flop a set multi way, um, less chance that the big blind's going to get out of line too much. If he just squeeze, it's going to be like with there being this much action you'd imagine his range is going to be more honest if you will yeah. so yeah I think I would have called in this but I don't typically like calling it a small blind I get where you're coming from but I think this is a spot where I think we can call but yeah, yeah obviously there's nothing on with squeezing I think it just it's higher variance and it opens up the far bet which would be a pretty big problem for us yeah uh, get called in two spots and flop a set so we bet I think this could be a lot bigger um, yeah, because we're not going to be c-betting this light ever. If we have ace-king here, we're not c-betting. Yeah. So I, like, I can't think of any bluffs we would have in our c-betting range on this board. So if we're not going to have any bluffs, um, we can think about making our bets bigger. But given that the SPR is so fucking tiny anyway, I don't think it matters. Yeah. Um, from a balanced perspective, yeah, I guess making it bigger, because we're not, we're not, from, not from a balanced perspective, sorry. From a point of like we're going to be so value heavy we may as well make our bet bigger i like the thought of it but the stack i mean there's we're not folding ever doesn't matter what size we use here we're not the only disaster is if we get bet small we get called and that the a jack of a 10 rolls off but yeah i don't think it matters how much you bet here as long as we put the bet in i think that's the most important thing uh we get raised here then he flaps <laughs> <laughs> which feels so bad it does but i don't care if he's got fucking jack 10 we've got outs against that we've got equity against it um, and yeah. we just have to jam it we just literally have no choice we just jam here and hope that we're up against ace queen and something like that rather than rather than like a, the biggest disaster obviously pocket queens i don't yeah. mind if we're up against a straight at least we've got equity we just have we have no choice we have to go with it yeah. if it's just a monumental cooler it's a monumental cooler so you definitely just jam it and not worry about yeah he's got nothing remit, behind him yeah. yeah he's not i mean if he folds fucking laugh out loud at him i guess you know yeah he calls he turns over aces he turns over ace nine wow that shot me yeah i mean i was when, when the guy in the button calls you you know he in his mind he has to be fucking mega strong in his mind he's probably trapping like fuck still yeah um I mean, the paranoid knit in me just thought, oh, fuck, Jack-10, but never mind, let's go anyway. Um, yeah, so nah, he's like, if you're going to bet, you surely you shovel in to get me out, so why do you want me still there? It kind of felt... Yeah, it looked like he was just, like, trapping the fuck out of you. But you've got a set in a massive squeeze pot and you see bet you can just literally never fold there. You just, yeah. if it's a time for you to go broke, it's just a time for you to go broke. And there's nothing much else to say about it, really. It's just a, it's not cool, I mean, it's, God knows what the fuck the butter that cut doing. It's a yeah. bit of a cooler for the button, but um, you've got to take your cooler like a man. Sometimes you're on the right side of him, sometimes you're on the wrong side of him. But, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to misplay that hand. The only way to misplay will probably be to fold at some point, I think. Yeah. How are we doing for time, sir? Uh, about 15 minutes left. Magic. Uh, so we open, yep, call into spots. <laughs> we bet value. Make it a bit bigger because we are more away. Yep. Call. Um, I had to check back because I didn't think that was a particularly great turn, really. No, it's not ideal. We can check back and we can just call Rivers on, make a value bet if he checks again. Yeah. That's not That's a great run. That is not a great run out in general. No. Well, I think we just have to pay it off. It's a small bet. Um, yeah. We kind of, this is one of the best times we're going to have, etc., etc. We block the nuts. Um, 
yeah, we're going to lose a lot here, but it's a small pot, and I think if we fold this, we're folding too often. Um, he might just have... I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking of like worst value hands he can have, but he might have some random bluffs if he's just randomly like, check card with pocket sixes, something like that, for example. He might not be bluffing with that. Um, and we just have to call. It's a small pot. I would just call and expect to lose a lot, but it's fine. You know, we have to we have to win what quarter of the time here, something like that. It's yeah, twenty four percent. Um, yeah, I don't like it, but it's yeah, just call and crack on, I guess. Yeah. Is this too high up in your distribution? Similar to that ace eight and where you raise as a bluff, this kind of too high up in distribution, really. So um, I think you're doing that because I got to the same point where I thought, do I really beat much value? Can I use the ace as a blocker? But then, do I play a flush this way? It's kind of a bit. Uh, I just think there's, you know, he's, he's going to have too much ten x that isn't going to fold if we raise. Yeah. Um, and stuff like that. So I wouldn't. And I think like the, the other hand. Yeah, it was weak. It was too weak. This isn't. I think this has, this has some showdown value. The other hand, like, didn't have that much showdown value at all. I can't remember exactly what it was, but yeah. I recall. I just thought we're going to call and lose all the time. I don't think we're going to call and lose all the time here. So I don't think it's as important to raise because I see not all the time, but enough of the time I see people just have pocket fives here. So yeah. They're just like whatever. I'm just fucking betting. I don't know why they do it. I've no fucking clue why they do it. But people just turn up with random nonsense from time to time. Um, which is enough for me to say, you know, we can call versus random nonsense and stuff. Yeah. Uh, he turns up with. Yeah, and that's kind of unlucky, but whatever. It's about to turn out. Uh, seems straightforward. Check back. Yeah, I think we can value bet that against someone with his stack size, but yeah, yeah, checking back's obviously completely fine. As long as you now bet two streets or call two streets if you donks, I think it's okay. Yeah, he does dunk for pop. Yeah, but we can't fold just yet. Yeah, so he's a call. I mean, I'm much less excited to call pot size bets. And then river two pair, and then he two x's it. Well, chips it basically two x's it. I think a call. I think. I mean, he could be overvaluing. I mean, he, who knows with these like players who have like, weird stack sizes, and we have no hands on him. Like, he could be that like, the world's biggest donkey, or he could be the world's biggest nit. We don't know. Um, yeah, I'm just not folding it. I'm just gonna call, and if if I've let him get there, then I've let him get there. I guess because he can just have like worst. He can just have king x. He can have fuck who knows what some random queen that he thinks is the fucking nuts. We just don't know enough about him, but we do know he's got a short stack size, and he's now. I kind of made a weird river over bet, which is kind of quite polarising, but who knows. Um, yeah. We've got two pair. I'm just going to call, and if I've let him get there somehow, or if he's been there from jump, then tough shit for so, me. Yeah. Just be grateful that he's only got $3. Cool. Uh, I call, and he turns away. <laughs> okay, <dokie>. uh. <laughs> And that's why we have to call. Yeah. I was wondered, one of the reasons in here is, I wonder if you knew the name, because when we talked on the last video you did about like potting the turn and then over betting rivers on when people check back. So I was wondering if this was somebody you knew and had adopted that policy. If that was somebody I knew, they wouldn't be playing that stack size. Yeah. So, no. Well, they might be. Who knows? Yeah. I would hope they wouldn't be playing that stack size. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't think this is the sort of person who's going to be thinking too much on those lines. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, if he was thinking in any way in that way, he would already know enough to know to play a full stack. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess it's just some random donkey doing some like random donkey random activity. Thing. Yeah. Cool. Right. We open. Cold. Going to make a bet. I think we can make it a little bit bigger. You know, on that board texture, yeah, I think we can. Um, but then we get raised. I'm going to get fucking slaughtered for this, but I just like I just like folding right here right now. Um, yeah. We've been bet, raise. I mean, I, I like folding before the fucking small blind call called. I think we just have, like, really quite... If we have good equity here, we're going to get blown off at a fucking ton on turns. We're going to check. There's all kinds of turns that we can't continue on. Um, we might already be in really rough shape. Um, tons of people here be like, how can we just fold top pair, top kicker to a single raise? I routinely fold in spots like this when with business out of action. Um, and I think it's much better than getting sticky. So I would just fold here personally and I really wouldn't worry too much about it. I call just because we were getting 
we need to be right 17 percent which i think but the thing is we have to go yeah, wherever we are that's a problem we have to write 17 percent but then you've got to get that fucking rightness all the way to showdown too yeah so it's not just, if this was like the last street and like all the betting was all in, then it's a trivial call. But it's yeah. not. We've still got fucking like 90 big blinds behind. Yeah. Um, and we can't really do anything. What we're going to do now this turn, we just have to check fold, I guess, unless you just want to get in check call mode, which doesn't seem too nice to me in these games. He bets and he ships. Which I think becomes now a yeah. trivial fault. I think we've got the message by now, haven't we, that we're yeah. probably about fucked. <laughs> And he calls. And they turn up with that. Wow. Well, fair dues, you know, but what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you think it should be a fold on the flop? Because I, I was very close to just getting rid of that. I point. would have folded on the flop. You know, it's, yeah, and this is one of those situations where folding the flop would have been a mistake against the exact hands, but against the ranges. I mean, it's not hard to put him, that player, on like a semi bluff. It's, it's yeah. got a ball where he can have lots of these types of hands. But uh, then the big blank, then the the big blank calls. So uh, I just think it, uh, against their combined equity, top pair, top kick is not in good shape on that board, and that's just how to look at it. I think against their combined equity, we're fucked. Um, heads up. I think if the small, if the big blind had folded, I think we'd have had to continue on that board some of the time. But I just tend to overfold there, and even getting semi buff from time to time. Well, that's the beauty of our position. And I'm going to be getting my own back in, like, not, that's, that sounds petty, but I don't mean it in that way. Because I'm going to be, like, putting pressure on my opponents in exactly the same situation. Yeah, when I flop, the, you know, it's all reciprocal, isn't it? Sometimes we have to bet fold ASX here. Sometimes we get to be the guy that puts a semi bluff in and gets it to work. So I, I don't think it's, like, such a big deal. Um, yeah, as nitty as it sounds, I think I would just have folded the flop. As it happens, yeah, of course you would have won the pot and you would have won a massive pot and felt like an absolute hero. And maybe when you folded him and you saw this hand at showdown, you thought, oh, fuck, I should have stuck in there. But I don't agree. I think versus their combined ranges, folding the flop's really nitty, but I think it's doable. And folding the turn's completely mandatory, I would expect. What do you think to his play at the big blind? I think his play's fucking the horrendous. Raise on the top, or the raise on the turn. I mean, it's worked out for him really well. But yeah. if he does that long term, he's going to be getting slaughtered. Yeah. Absolutely slaughtered by uh, our combined ranges. If he's like check jamming ace queen there. Yeah, I mean, literally, this is like one of the only hands he gets called by that's worse than him. Yeah. I think. Um, yeah, so I don't like it. He's got away with it. Of course he has. He's had the absolute primo result for his bad play. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it's good. I, I, th I like the way that um, Sarah Will Betts played the hand. I think Sarah Will Betts played the hand close to perfectly um, I think you played the hand really well too I think the person that played the hand the worst has won the pot but that's what happens in poker that's sometimes isn't it <laughs> sometimes the person who plays the worst wins yeah uh, so we open yeah, three bet um, I don't like it but I've been doing a bit of work on my ranges and yeah. kind of the bottom pocket pair I've kind of got a call with yeah I think, I think like for people who use Snowy I think Snowy might say it to fold but um, I, I would just think you know what it's too. I mean, I would fold some smaller pairs, but I think yeah. pocket nice is just too strong, and I would yeah. call. I would call. Yes, yeah, so I fold eights down. So it's literally the lowest pocket pair yeah. I call in this spot. This is yeah. kind of the problem we get into, though, isn't it? That now we're we're just in a complete guessing game now. Yeah. Which I hate being in. I don't think I fault at this point because you can just be better with a gut shot. Yeah. And then the queen rolls off. He bets again. It's just like I, I, I get bored of <laughs> I get bored of saying it, but again, I would just fall. I just maybe I respect yeah. aggression too much in these games. I don't know, but my results are like pretty decent in these games, mm -hmm. and I just I'm pathologically opposed to just like check calling down with bluff catchers because I just I really genuinely I mean maybe players are getting better and better. Maybe they are bluffing effectively here, but I'm I'm having a hard time in thinking like what bluffs they can have, um, realistically. Ace X of spades, maybe. Um, but anything else, I'm not sure. Maybe his three bet has been like 10 9 of spades and he's picked up a spade draw. But um, I just think, like, what bluffs does he credibly have here, realistically have? Is he blasting off with Ace King here? Maybe he is. Um, but we, he just gets to win, I guess, if he is. Uh, this is why I don't like defending these medium pocket pairs because 
you know, you're going to face a lot of heat from... I mean, his, his range for three betting uh, middle position versus cut off middle versus middle position is going to be pretty strong anyway, you'd imagine. Yeah. He hasn't done anything to tell me he's got a weak hand. We're just hoping he's got a weak If we call here, we're just hoping he's bluffing. We haven't got yeah. any, like, real good reason for thinking he is. We're just fucking hoping he is. Yeah, just want to just Yeah, I just don't want to call and just hope he's bluffing. It seems like a shit way to play the game to me. So I think I would just, like, give him credit here and just say that it's a tough spot. I might have the best hand, but it's going to get really difficult on the river. So I'm just going to fold now and cut my losses. That that's how yeah. I would approach this situation. I'll go ahead and call. And then I'll just check. And he bets tiny. That looks so fucking valuey, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, would, I wouldn't be in this. I'd have been out of this spot on the, yeah. um, probably on the turn. Um, yeah, I'm not on the flop, not pre flop. Yeah, that. <sighs> I mean, we're getting absurd price, but it's like, what the fucking bluffs does he have? And if he turns up with one, like, like I don't know, 8-7 or 6-7 or something like Because I guess he can have 8-7 and 6-7 suit depending on what his 3-betting strategy is, which hands he chooses to put in his 3-bet bluffing range. So he can have some, but again, it's just too much of a leap for me. Um, everything he's done looks like he's got a value hand. Yeah. Uh, I've no reason to suspect differently here. Uh, I would just fold. I mean, it's a much tougher spot if we have like pocket jacks or something like that. Um, even though it's effectively a very similar hand, it yeah. just feels like it's a much bigger pocket pair. Does it? emotionally, it feels yeah. more difficult? But um, uh, yeah, I just fold. And you know, if you call here, he turns up with a bluff. Then I'm pleased for you. But I think in general, in these spots where people go three bet triple barrel, cut off versus middle position, I think looking people up with pocket nines is going to be a losing play long term. Yeah. I would imagine. Yeah, especially because this the bottom the bottom of a range really in terms of pocket pairs that I get to the flop with. So at some point this should have really disappeared. I think so. Yeah, I think the turn was a spot to get away. I understand yeah. why you might call this river because like is kind of we're getting like we're decent enough odds. We get we're, we're not getting decent enough odds. We're getting what looks like decent odds to call. But um, is he bluffing here twenty percent of the time? Maybe he is. But um, and I would just fold. I call, I, need, I think he does turn up with a bluff, but I don't like the way I played it. I think he's just got some random bluff. What but... the fuck is he doing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I guess it's like a the Queen's, like a good scare card for against your range. Yeah. Um, I have no idea what he was doing there. And this is why lots of people like justify like calling down these spots, because I guess there are a bunch of like, just aggressive regulars out there just fucking randomly mashing buttons. Um, and uh, did we know more about this player? I think now we can definitely, if we take a note on this, that he just yeah. like, he's capable of just having like random nonsense in his triple barrel bluffing range. Then we can take these hands and call down. But um, I don't think, I don't like just doing it without a good reason to do it. Yeah. And based on them stats, you wouldn't really put this sort of hand in his. His range really would you? No, I mean he can he can absolutely have this hand to, to three bet with pre flop, and yeah. I don't mind his flop C bet. He's got a good shot. He's got like two overs and a, and a backdoor back flush draw. So up until the flop, I think you've both done the right things. Uh, on the turn, I think you've made a, a reasonable check. He's made a bad bet. In my opinion, you've made like a losing call. And on the yeah. river, he's made another like. He he convinced me anyway. He absolutely yeah, convinced, so he, he convinced me. me. He got value hand, and I just kind of. I don't know if I were autopiloting or what, I'd just click call. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just, like, programmed to just fold in these spots all the time. And maybe I am exploitable by people who know me, who know that I'm programmed to fold in this way. But not enough of the field do know me. And I think versus the population, check calling three streets in a three-bet pot here with pocket nines is likely going to cost you more money than it makes you. I would say, overall, yeah, this hand's worked out for you, but overall... Versus the population, I think this up. needs to be a fold at some point. Yeah, I think you're going to be losing money. Um, that's it, that's 45 minutes, Paul. That's it, is it? Right, we'll do one more yep. just for the fucking, just for the hell of it, because I want to try and get one right before the end. <laughs> <laughs> um. Although it is good proof that we don't look at these hands beforehand to try and make me look yeah. clever. We do, the, the, every week they are just completely new to me, which is, I think it's a much more objective way to do these things. Anyway, with three bet versus yep. a min raise, yep. I'm on board with that. Uh, and then get called four bet. Called four bolt by someone we have no stats on. Right. I mean, I we can't. 
I think calling, I don't like calling. I wouldn't blame you for jamming here. Um, I wouldn't hate a totally nitty four. We don't know anything about him. And he's made a cold four bet versus middle, versus un under, under the gun and cut off. So if he's not a nutter, then our hand's probably not really, not that great in this situation. But obviously you can have pocket queens, pocket jacks, ace queens suited, that type of thing. I don't like calling. I think we had a fold or jam. We don't know anything about him. I'm just going to say, fuck it, get it all in. I think. Yeah. I don't like, like it. It's like, it's at the, it's the bottom of me. Like, it's not even like a value. It's kind of a semi bluff now, isn't it? You know, that, yeah. you know, we, we, we're just like jamming here. Hoping, hope he yeah. Wins. Hope he doesn't have kings or aces. Yeah. Basically. Hope if he calls, he's got ace, queen or pocket queen, something like that. And, um, but we're, we're playing for the fold, obviously. Um, yeah. try to get into full some equity, but yeah, I'd hate calling we're off suit. It's, it's, yeah, we're going to miss the flop a lot. He's going to see it and just win a lot. So if we're going to continue in the hand, I think I prefer just jamming and you know, maybe he just sometimes folds pocket tens or something like that, pocket jacks. I, mean, we don't, I don't even care if he folds. I mean, I don't mind if he calls with the ace queen, but I don't, think, I don't care if he folds the ace queen either here. I'm happy just picking up. There's lots of money in that pot right at the minute. There's what is there's 322. Yeah, I'm happy just to pick up that pot right now and just jam it in. I don't like it. It's not something I do super often, but yeah, I think I would do it here. I call, I think I get a little bit spooked, but I don't like it in hindsight. And then kind of get to this point here, where he... Wow, that's a me. big bet. Yeah. I, I mean, at, at this point, I don't think he's bluffing. You've given yourself a chance to get away from your hand. Um, I think as played, I would now kick myself with just calling and say, you know what, I'm going to fold because that C bet's fucking huge on a board that hits our range pretty hard. We're going to have like a lot of pocket tens and pocket jacks in our range here. Yeah. We're going to have pocket tens, pocket jacks, pocket queens, that type of stuff. Um, so we, we've got lots of stuff here that's going to be at a call or jam. Um, I would just fold the ace king at this point because he just looks, again, he looks incredibly strong. Yeah, uh, this is the hand that actually got me to look at all my ranges because I got to this spot here and then couldn't work out what I get to this spot with. So I couldn't work out if I have a lot of jacks or tens. Well, or you would, you would surely have pocket jacks and pocket tens all the time. Because they're the hands that you wouldn't want to fall bet and get in, but are too strong to fall. So I think you're going to yeah. have queens, jacks, tens here a lot. Then you're going to have like hands like this, ace, king, maybe ace, queen suited. So if you like, yeah. get let go of the ace, king, ace, queen, ace, king, and the ace, queen suited type hands, and just get it in here or call it off or whatever you want to do with your tens through jacks. I mean, sometimes if you're worried about overfolding in the spots, when you get called far bet, just, just call sometimes with kings and queens too. Yeah. So then you... Just you, know, you, then you them in as well. Yeah, just why not? You know I mean? Especially when you've got aces and kings, could you block like ace, king so hard? And what have you? I mean, that, I don't mind. Just in fact, a lot of the time I would just call you with aces and kings, so then we can just like not to protect my ranges. So it's just looking after like a, a better raising range in the flop because we could just jam aces and kings here and and be really happy with the situation. So yeah, I think we we can have enough other stuff where we can just let ace king go. That's Ooh. a cool which I really don't like. Yeah, I really don't like. That. If we're gonna do anything, you gotta ship it. You have to put the rest in because what we we can't really fold the turn anymore. No. Yeah, and we know, the thing is, we know this turn jam is going to be coming as well. Yeah. And then a king peels off. And then the turn jam comes. I have no idea what he's, what he's got here that's a bluff, but the way you played it, we, we cannot possibly even consider yeah. folding now. But um, I don't think we're going to win very often. But you made a cunt him before, so you might be about to make one yeah. of you again. Who knows? I don't, I don't remember what I had in the sand. The sand just spots all the... Oh, there what go. the fucking... <laughs> sweet Jesus. And the, oh, my good grief. You do what you don't have. Bring some fucking pearlers, don't you? That yeah. is, that is bonkers. Yeah, but ignoring what he had, I don't think I could play this hand much worse. No, um, and that, but that's why jamming priest pretty cool because yeah, um, yeah, he's got six three, but I don't know what equity six three has against ace king pre flop. But I'm gonna guess it's in this sixty percent range. Yeah. Sorry, not in the forty percent range. Yeah. Sorry, like thirty to forty percent. So just having him fold that much equity pre flop is pretty nice. Yeah, fair enough. We've managed to like somehow get him to bluff all his stack off and uh, us find the calls. Um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd quite like his squeeze pre. I think it's quite dirty and sexy. But the rest <laughs> of it, I think, is fucking disgusting what he's done. Yeah. The rest of it. Because um, he has to know that turn. You what, what on earth do you think you're folding on that turn? I have no fucking clue what he thinks you're folding on that turn. Yeah. Um, so he's obviously just had a massive brain fart. I think I would have preferred jamming pre. I don't like the way you played the 
that the flop, yeah. I like the way you play pre-flop once you like to call. And I don't like the flop call, but for the second time, there's something you've done that I don't like, and it's worked out for you. So yeah. stop doing that to me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, totally fair play. I mean, thanks for bringing the hands because again, they're interesting, yeah. and it's not so much about what our opponents have. It's about like the just, way like, we play, the yeah. way we play our ranges versus them, and the way we like construct our ranges. So um, yeah, thank you very much for bringing them, buddy. The last two hands have been utterly fucking bonkers. Yeah. Uh, and it does just show that people do turn up with these random bluffs. And maybe yeah. it's making me think, do I need to go back and, like, am my population reads a little bit outdated? Mm. Am I, I? And that's something I'm going to have to go and like, have a think about. And I don't know how I'm going to improve the population reads, like, in a, in short order, because, you know, it takes a long time to, to move, for me to want to change population reads that I've got. My population reads really are kind of, people are pretty laggy pre-flop and pretty in-line post-flop. But maybe, I don't know, either you've just found some really cool, like, silly bluffs people have made, or, like, pre-flop, post-flop's changing more than, and it's gone past, my, my population reads are out of date. And I'm not sure which it is. It could be a mix of both. Maybe it's something I'll have to go back and look at, and I don't really know how I'm going to do that, to be honest with you. I'm going to have to put some thought into it because um, if this is indicative of what's going on, then my population reads are way out. Now, I don't think they were that far out, but clearly it's given me like cause to, pause to thought at least. So thank you very much for that. So you've certainly given me something to think about, and I'm sure you've probably given people watching plenty to think about as well because if, they're, if people are honest when they're watching it, I think they'd have made a lot of the folds that we discussed making too and yeah. we shouldn't be result orientated and that's like the final thing to take away from this is that the last two hands have been people making some like absurd bluffs but that shouldn't make us like inclined to always call down versus like strong lines because yeah. if we do, we're going to be running into a lot of pain a lot of the time. Yeah. Which is that, sir. Very much appreciate Fair it. Well. Awesome. I see you again next week. Yes, you take care, buddy. Right, take care, buddy. Bye for now. Thanks. Bye. Oh shit! Where's my pause button? Yeah.